onward and upward, or in this case, onward and downward. Uh, let's talk about the aforementioned Jaguars, the 904. Um, Rents, I'll come to you first. Let me mention this. Back in week eight, the Steelers were beaten at home by the Jaguars in another punchless effort by the Steelers at the time. Since that victory for Jacksonville, they have gone three and six. And Andrew Wingard was seen on the sidelines waving the terrible towel, disrespecting it like TJ Hushmanzada did back in the day, Breach, when he shined his shoes and it blew up in his face. Andrew Wingard had a Hushmanzada curse put on him. They went three and six the rest of the season, including one of the most demoralizing losses I can recall in week 18, discounting the way that Carson Wentz and the Colts lost in week, the last week of the season a few years ago. I had to watch that game <laughs> because I was interested as a Steelers fan. And uh, as I joked, Ryan Tannehill is a wild ride to have to pin your hopes and dreams on. Mike Vrabel deserves a raise. Derek Henry did a fantastic job dragging that team, and so did Ty J. Spears. And Brentson, I'll come to you. Where do you start with all the problems that have beset a Jaguars team that many people uh, thought had an MVP candidate in the quarterback and had a chance to – one of you said that they had a chance to have the best record in the AFC, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of my bold predictions. Um, they lost to the Niners. So the Jaguars start the season, beat the Colts a double digits. Lose to the Chiefs to the Texans. Texans game was weird. Turns out not as weird. Texans are good. Win five straight games going into their bye. Get absolutely blitzkrieged by the Niners coming out of the bye. Win two more games. And they're sitting at eight and three. With their losses to, the, again, the Texans at home, weird one, maybe a Chiefs hangover, but the Chiefs, the Niners, and the Texans. They're 8-3, and three, and they have the Bengals, backup quarterback. Browns, backup quarterback. Ravens, tough matchup. Buccaneers, eh, Panthers, and the Titans. And they have to win two of those games to get to 10 wins and essentially guarantee that they make the playoffs. And yes, Trevor Lawrence got hurt. I don't think that excuses everything because C.J. Beathard beat the Panthers. So you just got to find one more win against Jake Browning, Joe Flacco, Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, and Ryan Tannehill. Now, I do think that the fact that Tannehill and Derrick Henry were playing the last game in Tennessee, that Mike Vrabel could have been coaching his last game in Tennessee, not because he'd be fired, but for whatever reasons, we, we don't know. It's up in the air still. Unsettled is what Adam Schefter called it on on Sunday morning, I think that much is clear. And they were getting revenge from last year when they got booted by the Jaguars in week 18. So like, I wouldn't shock that the Titans won, but man, to the way they won. The, right. The way they won, Jacksonville's offense feels broken. I, I'd be interested to see what happens this offseason. Doug Peterson is not getting fired. I mean, you know, he went and won a playoff game. Um, you can definitely complain about the coaching. Uh, I think tell me a team that's underachieved more offensively than the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, maybe the Eagles, but that would be the only. Okay, that's one. I mean, that's about that's it. Deep, I mean, no, Jaguars, dude, Jaguars are up there. I was thinking when we were talking about CJ Stroud. I mean, how I was like, how am I possibly going to make this argument that I would prefer Trevor Lawrence to CJ Stroud? Let me tell you how bad it got because. Our buddy Pete Prisco likes to make fun of me and, and you too when we're on the podcast on Tuesdays about how much Bryce Young is terrible, yada, yada, yada. And I actually texted him um, today and said, oh my gosh, Trevor's worse than Bryce. And he actually said, yes, he is. <laughs> I <laughs> broke Pete. He was, And then he sent the tweet out where he, he did make it clear that he was not happy with the way the Jacksonville Jaguars conducted themselves this season. But for him to not even put up a fight, which is not very Pete-like, tells you where he's at on, on should, that. Should the Jaguars fire Pete from the, the team's radio show because he cursed them by putting them in the Super Bowl. They better hurry up because I think on Monday morning, uh, on Monday show, he's going to have some 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 words to say. Well, I think Trevor light? Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence was a huge problem down yeah. the stretch. I mean, you look at what happened. Hey, look and and uh, Harry threw up the graphic just as I say that. How do we feel about Trevor Lawrence? That's a tweet from Chase Daniel. And look, it has not been good. He ended this season. <laughs> with 21 turnovers 10 of those came in the last four games Jeez. he threw three interceptions in that loss to the browns that was a big reason why they lost he threw two interceptions against the buccaneers in a game where it felt like on paper they had more talent but they got smoked and then the ravens game he had that bizarre fumble where the ball just fell out of his hands when they were at least in min minimum in field goal range 
Maybe they don't get he a touchdown. Maybe they get stopped. He didn't need to play in that Browns game after the after that injury in the Bengals. He needed to sit out a week, I think. I don't know if it changes the trajectory of the season, but like he was way too injured to be playing, and I think that certainly affected the offense. This is also an offense that is not like they don't throw vertical. I mean, he had a great vertical pass to Calvin Ridley in this game, but this but he also had one that he totally missed to Calvin Ridley that could have won the game or tied yeah, it. It feels like this offense is more dink and dunkish than it is verticality. I sort of well, when your quarterback can't hit the target, and he had two to Breach's point, he had two terrible interceptions. Like Breach could have made those throws. He overthrew a stop route mm-hmm. on third and short. You said you could throw the ball forty yards, and he had a couple true. of those where he had his guy was running a stop route, and he overthrew it, and it, the ball sailed out of bounds. It just he was erratic today, and he struggled with his accuracy. It, but you know, he didn't practice for much of the week. He was dealing with shoulder injury, so there's a lot of things to that. But if you're going to play, you know, your team expects you to put you in a spot to win, and, and it didn't feel like Trevor did that. I, I think I think just it's interesting to note, and I and this is sort of more of like a bigger picture item, but um, again, Kernacki or whatever, the guy for NBC, the election guy who they brought in to do all the football stuff, pointed out how last year, so the Jaguars had a 96% chance of making the playoffs um, after 12 weeks of the season. That's really hard to miss. Now, at the same point last year, they had a 3% chance of making the playoffs and ripped off five wins. And I, I just think it is, oh, lovely. Thank you, Harold. Or Harry, excuse me. Um, 98, 93, 90, 90, 72, 69, 76, zero. That is the trajectory of their playoff chances each week starting after week 12. It is really hard to get 12 weeks into the season and have a 98% chance to make the playoffs and miss the playoffs with multiple teams below 500 remaining on your schedule. I just think it's also interesting to, this is how football works, where you know, last year's Jaguar season is seen as this massive success. You know, they win the division, but it was really improbable that they won the division. It was really improbable that they won that playoff game. And you'd have to be a sucker to pick them to make the Super Bowl based on like this sort of little bit of house of cards stuff. And so I think if you take last year and this year and step back from them, you could say that maybe they even out a little bit and this team wasn't quite as close to ascending as we thought they were, even with an easy schedule. But I, I'm not, I think I'm curious if they maybe pursue Frank Reich, who was the OC when Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl to be the OC. You're going to keep going with Press Taylor? No, I mean, well, I don't know if that's the answer, but I don't think you go backwards. <laughs> I'm I just saying Frank- the, the Eagles won the Super Bowl with, Doug, with Frank Reich as a there are a I, lot of concerns uh, from people in Philadelphia and in Jacksonville how Frank Reich is, uh, excuse me, Doug Peterson is coordinating up this offense, calling plays. So th- I think they yeah. they have to take a long, hard look at, at everyone on that tree and maybe go look at another tree that rhymes with uh, Mon McMay or Mile Manahan. I'm well, I mean, Doug Peterson, Doug Peterson is not going anywhere. He won a playoff game last year. He doesn't year. have to go anywhere, but he, he can let someone else call plays because – there, there have been some rough patches, and you talked about the, exactly no the, doubt about it. The rough patches. So, I mean, look, I don't. Frank Reich seems like a swell dude. I don't know if his future is going to be. Uh, maybe he should take some time off at the lake house and just just take some time, <laughs> like Leslie Frazier, take some time to reflect. And of course, do, Doug Peterson's not going anywhere, Brent. I mean, th- he just finished two winning seasons in right. a row with right. Jacksonville. Do you know how many coaches have done that with Jacksonville? Tom, Tom Coughlin? Coughlin and uh, probably uh, Jack Del Rio. I bet Jack Del Rio may have done it. The last Jack time was did it, yeah. Jack Del Rio, 2004, 2005. So literally, Peterson just did something the Jags hadn't seen in 17 years, 16, 18 years. 